John Cawley, Fridays we talk about chords and today I wanted to talk about just an idea about how you could potentially practice chords. So I think there's this point for a lot of people where, you know, first of all the chords we kind of learn, we learn that sort of thing. And someone will say, can you play C major? or you know, you play A minor, or you look at a chord sheet and say, okay, right, I've got these kind of big shapes that I can use for that. And then there's the other side of things, and I get comments on videos and stuff, and people asking, how do you, where do you get these chords from and stuff? So one of the places that you can get chords would be from other kind of videos about chords or whatever, um, or, you know, if you delve into some kind of transcriptions and stuff, so like Eric Johnson chords was a thing that I kind of discovered um, this different way of playing from, uh, I think that's a, a good place to go as well. But there's other things you could do just if you've got five, ten minutes to spare. And this sort of exploration, I think, is useful. So this is what I just wanted to kind of talk about. So if we take, say we imagine we're in the key of E major. If we play over the fourth degree of the scale there, one, two, three, four, you'd have an A, and in E major, it would probably be an A major, right? And so what I was thinking is by, first of all, pick a string set. So I'm just playing triads uh, with the D, G, and B string. So first of all, kind of think about where you would play those. So that's kind of step one, is find the triad of what you're thinking about. Then what I thought was maybe you think about one additional note you could add to those triads. So I was thinking, well, I quite like the sound of the nine most of the time. So what's the nine of A major? It's B, right? So we can add a B to this here. There's a B up here, so so just kind of look at your fretboard and look for the other Bs, or, or. and then move to your next kind of triad. So I'm just keeping it nice and easy because I'm just thinking about these three strings here. So here's my other triad. So we can think about other places where we can play that B. So I'm looking here. trying to visualize where I can play that nine alongside my triad. So again, we could go up to here. So the second inversion, wait, this was the first inversion. We started on the second inversion. Here's the first, sorry, here's the first inversion. Root position triad. And then the second inversion. So we're up here. So we're again looking for B's, here's one, so here's one, uh, here's one, um, or we could play it like this, I guess, hold on, uh, what else can we do, here, so, more like that. Those are a few little ways that I've just come up with some voicings, some of which will have been new to me, just by adding one chord to, the, uh, one note, sorry, to, to chords I already knew, or, or up here. I've never played anything like that before, or here. I think that feels slightly familiar, but not something I would usually grab. So that's kind of one thing. Take your triad, first of all, move it around to the inversions, and then think about one additional note that you could add to it, and try and be diatonic with this. So if you were E major, you'd have a D sharp there, rather than a D. But, so, that kind of thing. So if we're playing in E major, about 
about keeping the things that should be sharp, sharp. So like the D should be. So uh, ways you could play like that. So I'm just kind of thinking about. Ways to add that in. Um, Sort of thing. Then the next kind of thing is to maybe think about moving triads and sort of having a group of triads. So what I was playing as well earlier was this kind of thing. So I move from an A triad to my nearest B triad to my nearest E triad and you can do this kind of thing. Generally, that's got a really cool sound. So here's another one, A, B, E, B. I kind of like that sound as well. And I guess part of what you could do with this is try and play it to rhythm, or just try and play it as smoothly as possible. And try and figure out if there's more efficient ways that you like to play things. That's not, or then up here what we have A, B, E, B, so experiment with that, and then the same idea as before, what I'm thinking is what if I can try to add a B to what's going on there, so we start here, play that B, and then we've got the B triad, the E triad, and that gives you a, another kind of thing to think about and try and get this stuff to ring out I guess would be the um, and then we got one up here sound as smooth as you can. So that one's a little bit tricky for me. Um, then what else could we do? This one up here. I think we're going to have trouble. some limitations so what you could do is just take a different note so we could do like the F sharp the six and that's it, another challenge yourself something to work on for sort of five to ten minutes and probably find some new things by trying some of those little things out. So first of all, just try moving around the inversions of a triad, then try adding one interesting note to it, so in this case I chose the nine. And then maybe think about um, adding some other triads along 
alongside it. Just something to try and then maybe one extra note as well as the moving triads. static. Uh, and then, you know, maybe you have to change things up a bit. And you'll find new things that your fingers haven't done before. I think that's kind of one other way to find chords. Hopefully that's vaguely interesting to one or two people and helps you out with something. I'll put up a tab for all of this stuff that I've talked about on Patreon and I'll also put a backing track and intro together for this experimentation. No, cheers.